Welcome to In the Garden. I'm your host, Joyce Hoshpring, McLeod County Master Gardener. And today we're going to talk tools. I'm going to show you some of my favorites. And I just want to remind you that any brands that I might mention is not an endorsement by the University of Minnesota Extension. These are my personal favorites. So we're going to start off with two basic things that I could not garden without. One is my garden fork. Not a pitchfork. See, it's got a wider tines. And I use this for just about everything. If I want to dig a plant, I reach for the fork first because I can loosen the soil all around the plant, dig all around it, lift it out, and I'm not damaging the roots nearly as much as I would with a shovel. Also, if I'm digging a hole, it doesn't leave slick sides on the hole that the roots can't grow into or hit and stop, so this is my number one gardening tool. Well, I have a lot of number ones, so, but this is one of them. If I am going to use a shovel, I like this long, some people might call it a tiling spade or a transplant spade. I like the long blade. I also, if you notice, it's got a nice wide step here for stepping on, pushing it down. That's always helpful too. So those are my go-to digging tools. Then we're going to talk pruning shears. And they come in all shapes and sizes and brands. The one I would not get is something like this. This is an old one. I don't know if you can see, this is called an anvil type pruner. And when the blade comes down, it comes down on like the top of an anvil. So it does not make a nice clean cut. It tends to crush the stem of whatever you're cutting. Best used on dead wood if you're going to use it at all. This is another anvil, just a bigger one. As you can see, I kind of have small hands, so this big one is not comfortable for me to use. And again, I don't use an anvil pruner much. These are a couple of bypass pruners. And there are all kinds of brands out there from cheap to expensive. If you do a lot of pruning, it's probably worthwhile to invest in a good pair. If you just have a couple of shrubs that you're pruning, you can probably get by with a less expensive one. This one is a Baco. Got a nice curved handle, which helps with wrist. Uh, if you have wrist issues, that's a nice one. This comes in a couple different sizes. I grab, this is the small. I also have a large that my husband prefers because it's more comfortable in his hand. And this is a bypass. And what I mean by that is the blade, kind of like a scissors, comes by the outside blade and it cuts. If you keep it sharp, it makes a nice clean cut. And we know that clean cuts heal faster and more cleanly than if you crush the stem or tear something. My favorite is this ARS, and this is the small one. And I can go for hours with this one just simply because it fits comfortably in my hand. Also, I found the ARS holds an edge like none of the others I've tried. Also, when you get one, look for one where you can replace the blade because eventually, no matter how careful you are with it and how much you sharpen it, at some point, it might take years, but at some point, you're going to reach the point where the blade just doesn't hold an edge anymore. And it's nice to be able to just take this off, order a new blade, and put it on, and you're still good to go. I like this one. Got a nice little release here. I can just release it with my, in fact, I don't even need my thumb. I squeeze it and it pops open. Okay. Another thing is, it's a good idea to have a holster or a sheath, especially for your sharp tools. This one has a nice belt loop. I just stuck it on an old belt and throw it on. Most of the time when I'm doing this kind of pruning where I'm using this a lot or a saw, 
I'm out, it's late March, early March, and I'm outside and I've bundled up, so a nice big belt that goes all the way around my jacket is helpful. This is a folding saw. Nice and easy. Fits in here. I have my saw and my pruners handy. Just stick them back in when I'm not using it. Again, I'm, I'm partial to the ARS brand, but there are others. There are Felcos, Coronas, all sorts of them. I'm going to move these over. And if you have trees, at some point, you're going to need a lopping shears. This one, as you can see, has been around a while. We've lost the bumpers on the ends and the uh, trying to loosen and tighten these to extend the reach no longer works on these, but they still have a good edge. And these are the ones I usually reach for. I find they work better. Again, it's a bypass. You don't want the anvil type. And now this one is a ratcheting bypass tuners, which means that when you open it up, you have to open it way up, get it around the branch, and you can kind of ratchet down on the cut like this. One thing you want to remember is to keep your tools clean. So I like to, when I use my pruners after every use, I take like a Lysol wipe. I just wipe down the blades, scrub them down, that gets all the sap off the blades. Also, when you're doing this, if you're pruning on something that's diseased, you want to clean these before you move to another tree or shrub. I know a lot of people like to prune off their hosta flowers. They don't like them, and that's great. Fine if you do, but if you're going to do that, between plants, scrub the blades down to get all the sap off. And I mean, really work them over well. You don't want any sap left on because there's a uh, virus called HVX, Hosta virus X, and it's spread through the sap. So if you have it in one plant and you're going along pruning off the blossom stems and you're going from plant to plant, you're spreading that infected sap to all of your hostas. So clean your tools, especially when you're cutting, where you're cutting stems or and you're getting sap on them. This is a soil knife, and I've had this one for probably at least 15 years. If you were to really look closely, you could see I've just about worn the serrated edge off of here. I've used it so much. And I went hunting for something after you know, sticking a trowel in the dirt and having the handle bend the second time I used it, I said, that, you know, this is ridiculous. There's got to be something better out there. And there is. And you can buy good trowels. Cutco makes one. Um, but this is called a soil knife. This one happens to be the A.M. Leonard soil knife. And again, I do have a sheath for it. I, I guess I forgot to bring it out before the rain started. But I love the orange handle because I tend to lose tools. I don't know about you, but I'm weeding or pulling something or stop to snip something, lay it down, and then it's, where did it go? So the orange handle is helpful. However, this is, you know, and this one, like I said, I've been using this one for 15 years and it has dug and pried out more things than you can imagine. But I decided to upgrade this spring and I went to this bad boy. <laughs> Now this one is a, I don't know if I even know the name, Bare Bones it's called. It's a little more expensive, but that's got some serious cutting teeth on it and the edge is sharper. So I would not advise taking this one out with you unless you're taking the sheath out with you. This funny little looking thing is just the handy dandy little, I think it was about $4, 4 dollars 4 when I bought it many years ago. The curved tip makes it nice for dividing perennials. You can kind of get in there and saw through the root mass. 
so that's a, a handy little thing to have. I believe I got this either from Gardner Supply or maybe A.M. Leonard. Can't remember for sure. This handy dandy little thing is just made from nylon net. Uh, there's a gal sells them at the farmer's market if you haven't been there. And they're great because they dry out really fast. So after you've used it, and I just put a little cord through it so I could hang it with the tools in the shed. And it's dry in no time. So you don't have this smelly, soggy, icky thing hanging there. You can spray it out. And when I'm done with my tools, just a quick on them and rinse with the hose if need be, and I'm good to go. Also, just to mention that not everything here, but some of these things are stainless steel. So should you happen to be one of those people that leaves it out in the rain, no problem. Just clean it up and you're good to go again. These are a couple of little hand tools. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. This is called a Cape Cod weeder, and I try to keep a pretty sharp edge on it. I did spray the handle with some fluorescent paint. I lost this one year in one of my flower beds. I spent the entire rest of the year looking for it, and it finally came around to the next spring, and I thought, okay, surely when I clean off the bed this spring, I will find it. I didn't, so I broke down and said, okay, I got myself a new one, ordered a new one. A week it came, a week later, I found this one, so I now have two of them, which is fine because, you know, I still tend to lose things sometimes. That's a, a fun one. This is a small circle hole. This is the edge that does the damage. It's kind of a, just use a pulling motion. It's nice because you can get in close to the plants. Same with this, um, what, with this Cape Cod weeder. And it's, this is probably the one I use the most simply because I find the grip to be the most comfortable. This one is a little fatter, wider. If you have bigger hands, you might find you prefer this one. This one fits my hands well. You may be wondering what this thing is. You've maybe seen it sitting here on the table. This was a new toy, I mean tool, for me this year. Um, as you probably know, I am a big fan of daylilies. And dividing them can be a chore, especially if you get a big clump. This is kind of on the principle of putting the two garden forks into the clump back to back and rocking and pulling. But the fulcrum here is down further, so it's a little easier to do. I used this this spring for the first time, bought it this winter after hearing about it and seeing people talk about it on a daylily forum I belong to. I thought, okay, that sounds really neat. And I dug up this big, really congested, overgrown clump of daylilies. And I had been putting off dividing it because I thought, oh, that is going to take me hours to work those roots apart. Well, I took this handy little tool. And if you look for one of these, it's called Don's Daylily Divider. You can Google it. Make sure it's one that, there are a couple of them out there, so make sure you get the one with this little step on it so you can step it down into the daylily. You get the daylily out of the ground, or even if you only want half of it loosened, dig around it, loosen it up, stick this down in, step it down in as far as you can, like down to here, and then it's just a quick, and the daylily clump pops apart. We're going to make a little demonstration. Anyway, it's not quite the same as in the ground, but I dug part of this yesterday because we were going to tape daylilies today too, but we're going to have to change that. So I've got it divided down this far, but that's still a little bigger than I want. So I'm going to kind of work this in there. Voila. 
You will damage the roots a little, but you do that when you cut or use a shovel too. So it wasn't that quick and easy and painless. And it's good to go, ready to plant. We're gonna talk a little bit about keeping your tools sharp. These uh, two sets are probably my favorites. This one is a three pack. You have a coarse, which is the blue, fine, which is the red, and then green is extra fine when you really want a nice edge on it. You use the coarse one if you did something silly like using your pruners to cut wire and you have a nick in it. You don't want to do that, by the way, but if you did, this one is the one you would take to smooth out those nicks first. And I'm probably more prone to get nicks in some of the bigger ones if I try to cut something that's, that I probably should have used the saw on. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that's ever done that. So, But the, the coarse one works well for that. And then you smooth it down a little more. And then you put the extra sharp, sharp uh, finish on it with that. This little guy is a Corona, which also makes pruners. Nice pruners, a little bit lower price point if you're not doing a lot of pruning. And it's just got this little blade. This is really handy. I'll stick it in my jacket pocket, you know, in the inside pocket or a zippered one and take it out with me if I'm gonna be out pruning. Uh, the master gardeners are often pruning at the fairgrounds and things like that. So, you know, sometimes after you've been pruning for a while, you kind of go, oh, especially if you've pruned a few oaks, then it kind of can be a little uh, tricky. Your thing gets uh, dull pretty quickly. So it's nice to have this one with me where I can just pick up the shears. If you really want to do it well, you take them apart and clean them, take them, loosen the knot, take it apart and take it off and then do it. But for a quick emergency or you just want to do a quick sharpening, you can just kind of see if I can turn it here. Just kind of slide this long. And I think I can cut paper with this right about now. So those are a few of my favorite tools. There are others, of course, but as always in the garden, there's always more room for tools, or as I call them, my toys. These, by the way, are called radius, and I didn't talk about the round handle before, but I find that you can change the grip. So if you're doing a lot of digging or for a long time, you can move your hands around on it so you don't, aren't stuck in the same position all the time. And it's a little easier on the hands and wrists. So one other thing. The other plus on this one is that, and I have done this once or twice, broken a handle. My husband goes, how do you do that? You're not big enough to break handles, but I have managed. And um, if you take a picture and email the company, Generally speaking, for the price of shipping, which is, I believe, $7, they'll send you a replacement. So uh, you can't beat that. These are also stainless steel, so you know when I have that bad habit of leaving them out in the garden sometimes, I don't have to worry about rust. Also, when I store them, I like to store them hanging up on the wall. Even though they're stainless steel, your edge stays better if you aren't, it's not bumping against concrete. And if they're not stainless steel and you're sitting on a concrete floor, you're more likely to get rust on them. So if you can get them up off the floor, either in something where you tip the handles down in it or hanging them on the wall on something. A couple other little things. This is a handy little, this is just a, a bucket from Runnings from Ladies Night a few years ago. And I purchased this, or it was a gift from my hubby, actually, from um, Woman's Work. And this one works because it hangs on the edge. I've tried a couple that supposedly have straps that go around and hold it. 
And as soon as you put a couple tools in there, they're sagging off the bottom. So unless you get like a bo bucket boss, I think it's called, or something where it goes over the side and on the inside, this one is a nice alternative, and it's cute. I like that. So I can throw pruners in here. I've got another soil knife. And this is, by the way, the sheath that you can get for the A.M. Leonard soil knife. Again, it has a clip. You can just clip it on your pocket or your waistband if you like. We're just going to tuck it back in here. Knee pads or a kneeling pad are a good thing. Saves your knees, believe me. When you get to be my age, your knees need all the saving they can get. This is another close-up gardening tool. Um, let's see if I can get that off. This one is called a cobra head. I'm probably going to gift this to one of my kids. The handle is just too big for me to use it comfortably. It, it's hard for me to grip. Uh, I have been told by somebody there is a Cobra Head Junior. I haven't looked into that yet. That's supposed to have a little bit smaller handle grip. But, you know, if you have a medium size or a larger hand, this might work great for you. They say it's really, really good for sidewalk cracks, clearing the weeds out of there. I, I will admit I don't use this one as much as some of the other things. Other little things in my bucket here. This is sort of a vinyl tape, green vinyl tape. I use it for tying up vines and things. Uh, if I want to tie something onto a trellis where it's, you know, it needs a little more support, I can wrap this around. It stretches, it has some give to it so it doesn't cut into the plants. And you can just tear it off with your hands or cut it either way. And because it's green, it pretty much blends in and you don't you know, see it sticking out as an eyesore. Put that back in here. But this is a dandelion digger. And this one works pretty well. Someplace in here. Ah, there we go. I also have this one. Both work. This one has like the little added fulcrum. And I couldn't even tell you what brand this is, but the grip is comfortable. It's got a soft grip and you just poke it down in there and loosen that root and pop it up. So these work fairly well. There's still room for improvement on these, I think, but they do the job for the most part. Okay, this is a grass shears or a hedge shears. This is handy for, I mainly use it for cutting back my grasses. I have quite a few ornamental grasses, and these are handy for cutting them back in the spring. Some people use a sawzall if you have that. Um, also, sometimes I've just used a sharp pruning shears, and that works too. But these are, I, I'm not a big hedge shearing person. I'm not much for the formal look, but these are handy on plants like the threadleaf coreopsis, where you'd go crazy if you tried to deadhead them one by one. And I just, when most of the blooms are finished, I just, you know, get a couple clips in and shear them back just an inch or two so that the lower buds can come on and bloom. So that's kind of a handy little thing. I don't use it often, but just a few times a year probably. And then that brings us to some gloves. Now my favorite gloves, these are called woman's work, because you know, we all know that men's gloves usually don't fit us. And again, because I have small hands, a lot of times I can't even find a size small in a lady's glove when I go into the stores. So I usually purchase these from woman's work. They have several different ones. Uh, these are kind of a nice one for summertime because they breathe. They've got this open thing on the top, and yet they're fairly flexible. I'll use these for tougher jobs. Um, when it comes to planting and weeding, where I'm pulling weeds or clipping things, 
uh, where I'm using a small scissors. Then I like my fox gloves. Because as you can see, they're pretty form-fitting, so you can reach and grab stuff. These are Fox Gloves grips. They've got the little grippers on them. I don't usually splurge on the grips. I usually keep one pair around. Because if I have, when I do wear out the fingers, or I get a hole someplace, with the regular Fox Gloves, I just turn them over and put them on the other hand, and I can get some more wear out of them. Cause yeah, they're not cheap, and I'm, you know, don't really like to throw money away. But the grips are handy when you're working with stuff that's kind of wet. You can hang on to it. And I almost forgot. These, literally, this holster and these little, they're called the fruit pruners or fruit thinning shears. They've got different names from different companies. This, again, is... My favorite is the ARS. This is a stainless steel one again, so I don't have to worry about it rusting. And this literally, I barely go out the door in the summer. I would get up, I put on my, you know, get dressed, put on the holster and this, pop it in there, and it is with me all day long. I use it when I'm in the, in the veggie garden, if I have a, you know, cutting eggplant or zucchini off the vine or it'll cut through, for as small as it is, it, it'll cut through quite a bit. I would recommend when you get to the bigger stuff, you use something more suited, but I've used this for other things. And like I said, this is for deadheading, flipping back, plants, it's just, and it's always with me. But do get the holster with it. Um, when I first got it, I thought, well, how am I gonna carry this with me? I don't wanna carry the bucket all the time. So I thought, well, I could put it in my back pocket. And my husband goes, don't you dare put this in your back pocket. And I thought, yeah, he's probably right, because you know, if I fall and stab myself in the kidney or something, that wouldn't be a good thing. So I went looking for a holster. And the only place I was able to find one that fit this was a company called GrowTech. Um, yeah, GrowTech.com. So if you're looking for a holster for a small shears, and I think they're about 10 bucks maybe. So not really a deal breaker. I bought them for all three of my kids last year for Christmas with one of these and they all go, oh, this is so great, mom. So yeah, these are, when I talk about things I couldn't garden without, this is definitely right up there. This is with me every single day, all summer long when I go out of the house. It just, in fact, there have been times I forgot I had it on and have gone to town with it hanging on my pocket. <laughs> So these are great. Hope I gave you some ideas for your birthday and Christmas wish list. Or just treat yourself to some of this. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time in the garden.